Here's Jim. Another new hire? He's here now? Oh, it was like I was doing anything else. Alright, what's the guy's name? <laughs> You're kidding me. Alright, I'll be right there. Bubba. You Bubba? Yeah, I'm here for my first Yeah, day. that's great. Uh, follow me. You ever run a spot welder? So if you ever run a spot welder before, it's no big deal. It's not that hard. You just put the part in, you step on the switch, and repeat. A caveman could do it. Okay, so now remember what I said. You just load the part, you step on that pedal, and repeat. You got it? All right, I'll be back in a few minutes. I'm gonna go have my biscuit. Hard in, foot switch, repeat. How hard could this be? Hard in, foot switch. Hard in, foot switch. Ah! Turn the air pressure up, idiot. Huh? 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 Oh. What could go wrong this time? Glad it wasn't me. Hey, new guy! What a first day. Isn't there anybody out there that offers resistance welding training? Did someone say resistance welding training? Uh... Boy, you sure look like you could have used some. Well, it would have been great 20 minutes ago. Who are you? Who am I? Who am I? I'm Resistance Ray! <laughs> no, seriously. Hey, dude. Your name's Bubba. Touche. What if I told you I had the power to undo the last 20 minutes of your life? What are you, some kind of time-traveling spot welder instructor? Me? That's exactly who I am. Well, that's oddly specific. Bubba, grab this force gauge and let's go back 20 minutes in your life. Fix those resistance welding screw-ups. Eh, it's not like this day could get any worse. Hey Bubba, resistance welding really is a safe and simple process. 
but we must have the proper PPE. Safety glasses are always a must when we're dealing with resistance welding and also gloves. We're going to be dealing with sharp objects, sharp metal, so we'll need to be able to protect your hands from being cut. When we look at safety with resistance welding, we need to know the procedures and we need to know our equipment before we do that. Okay. Uh, hang on there, Sparky. Before we start this process, let's go ahead and make sure our area is uncluttered. We don't want any trip hazard. We don't want anything that can catch fire if we do have any sparks. So our area is rather cluttered. Let's go ahead and clean it up before we start. Remember this morning when you had the arc flash when you turned on the power incorrectly? Well, when we look at, at a disconnect, we wanna make sure the door is secure, properly latched before we turn on or off the disconnect. Take a hold of the handle with your left hand and face away any time that you're turning it off and on. So let's go ahead and try that, see if that works better. Very good. Remember this morning when you tried to remove the electrode and it sprayed you with water? That's because these are water-cooled electrodes. That means there's water coming into these electrodes to keep them cool during the welding process. So before we change these electrodes, that we must turn the water off. Usually the water valves are on the back of the machine, and so there's going to be two of them. We're going to have one for the water out and one for the water in. Let's go ahead and close those valves before we remove the electrode. Now that we have the water off, we're going to go ahead and change out this bottom electrode that you can see really is in bad condition. We want to have one just like we have on the top. So we're going to change out this bottom electrode to the one that we have here. So watch how I change this out. I'm going to remove the bottom electrode. I'm going to put the top electrode in the position and push it down into the holder. But we need to seat the electrode before we go to weld. Normally we use the air cylinder to push that down into that holder so that we don't have a water issue. Usually we use the air valve which is right here. Every machine may have a different type of air valve. It's best to check with the supervisor or maintenance to show you the best way to activate that air valve to cause this electrode to be pushed down inside there. Normally when we activate this valve it pushes that electrode down into this holder. So we can go ahead and turn the water back on at this time. Go ahead and turn our air valve or water valves on. We make sure that we turn on the two water valves, the water going out and the water going in. All right, we've got our electrode seated at this time. We've got our water valves back on. We must have water before we go to weld. Whenever we're doing a resistance weld, that we are forming a weld between the two parts. You got a shower of sparks this morning. There was something that needed to be adjusted. We have three different components that we are worried about when we're making a weld. Force, current, and time. The current and the time are set up in your weld control. The force inside this cylinder is adjusted by this air valve that's on the side of the welder. Normally that we wouldn't want to adjust that if it's already been set. And so we have the air or we have the settings in the weld control. Those should be set up by your team lead or your weld engineer. Normally that you wouldn't touch the controls or the air system. Because when we are making a weld, we do not want the shower of sparks. So when I put the components in here to get ready to weld, that we do not want the shower of sparks that you've seen this morning. So when we come down on it, it should come down and do the weld without the sparks. 
Anytime that you have any tools, any steel in this throat area, the throat is from the face of the transformer out here to the electrodes. There's a magnetic field that's generated around this conductor. That's in any type of AC alternating current conductor. It generates a magnetic field through here. Any steel or any tools or any parts that's in this area will be picked up by that magnetic field and throw the part or the tool out of that area. That's what happened this morning. It was that magnetic field. You want to make sure there's no tools, no steel in that area before you go to weld. We've got our weld control on the proper schedule and it's set up correctly. We've got our air pressure set which is going to give us a correct force. So we've got force, we've got current, and we've got time. We've got the proper electrodes put in to our electrode holders. We're getting ready to make a weld. You'll notice there's the indent in the electrodes for that cross wire to fit. You have a foot pedal that's going to initiate that weld. When you have the parts in there, you will step on the pedal, you'll notice the upper electrode will come down, and you will notice that the weld will be made. You may notice a little bit of sparking or expulsion that occurs. On a projection weld or a crosswire weld, that expulsion is typical. That's just the contaminants in the metal that's burning off. It'll be about the same as a sparkler on the 4th of July not like the Roman candle that you seen this morning. So let's go ahead, put the parts in there. When you have the parts in there correctly, go ahead and step on the pedal. Very good. We have our quality weld at that point. Well, that was easy. Wish you would have showed up earlier before I had all those other problems. <laughs> Looks like my work here is done. You better get back to work. You only got 749 more of those to do. Wait! What if I need additional training? 